Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are going to pick up from where we left off last time we got together, talking about anxiety and the different types, the different forms of anxiety. It's so impactful and such a big challenge right now for a lot of people. That's why we're circling back and adding more depth. And if it's not you, maybe it's somebody you know. I got to believe that we all know, if it's not ourselves, dealing with call it elevated levels of anxiety. You probably know somebody who's dealing with it right now. He helps people with it all the time as a mental health counselor and coach at Healthy Counseling Center. And he's back with us with all of that insight. It is Dr. Ray Smith. Welcome back. How are you, Ray? I'm very well. Thank you. I'm glad to get to be talking with you about this. If we could lessen somebody's level of anxiety, just a notch, this will be worth doing. So I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. And we we talked about different forms last time we got together of anxiety. What are some of the ones that we didn't hit upon? Well, we talked briefly about generalized anxiety disorder, and that is sort of the most common kind when you find yourself worrying excessively, uh, too frequently, too intensely, it lasts too long, it interrupts the functioning of daily life. And for example, if you were worried about your work, well, that might be unnecessary because your work seems to be producing good results and people are getting information they need to improve their lives. So uh, the worry work kind of thing is generalized anxiety disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder is when you have obsessive thoughts about something that don't merit that kind of attention and compulsive behaviors to try to keep those bad thoughts from being hurtful. So if you've ever seen a show with Monk and saw his desire to keep things clean and not have any germs, that's mm. a comedy look at OCD. But if you're washing your hands enough that your skin's bleeding, you know that that is too much worry about obsessive thoughts and too much compulsive behavior. One of the ones that I'm very focused on in my work right now is post-traumatic stress disorder. We have a large group of soldiers and veterans here in Spokane, Washington, and what's going on in the Ukraine and Israel is upsetting a lot of people who are having nightmares and flashbacks of times when they were in harm's way. And the disorder upsets them, and it's not just the military or first responders uh, working with a lady who was raped and she didn't get physically injured to the point of death, but it still comes back again. Social anxiety disorder is a social phobia when you're afraid to be uh, self-conscious and around a place where you would get embarrassed or get judged. And that can even be a simple thing like waiting in line at the grocery store. I have first heard of this in my own practice with a lady who had food stamps and everyone was staring at her and judging her. And she finally had to leave her groceries and, and leave the store because she couldn't stand it. And she was convinced that if she collapsed and fainted from panic, that nobody would do anything about it. So that social phobia ended up being agoraphobia where she wanted to stay in the house. Can I jump uh, in one, one, one moment? Yeah, please. Me? The social phobia, Ray? Yes. Do some people also have, that have that, things like body dysmorphia, where uh -huh. they view themselves in a different way, and that also fuels their 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 social anxiety? Yes. For example, I have a patient right now in counseling who is a lot heavier than she wants to be, which prevents her from taking her garbage out, uh, doesn't want to be judged that she's been eating these wrong foods or that her clothes are getting bigger and bigger. She is so afraid of judgment that she doesn't want to go to a dinner with her family because people will stare at her. She doesn't want to go to church anymore. And she's devout in her faith. It's just she is afraid that people will look at her and puke and run. I don't know what is the bottom line of it. But obviously, she doesn't accept herself. So I couldn't believe that you would accept me 
just the way I am. I like that song, I, I Love You Just the Way You Are. Right, right. And hopefully people can. And if she loved herself, she might notice the rest of us didn't really care. I, I think each of us is much more aware of what's wrong with us and much more disturbed by it than what anyone else is. If um, you don't like my sport coat, you have a right to that opinion. I would defend myself. I recently saw a tape of uh, Steve, uh, the guy with the banjo, Steve Martin, uh, had on a uh, Peter Millar jacket just like this one. So I think if he can go into Nordstrom and get one, then I can too. And, <laughs> I'd, I'd wear yours. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, Maybe How do you work with be... somebody at that level to get them to realize that uh, they are a beautiful person, that they, what they're seeing isn't really the reality? It's it's it seems like it's very challenging to to help somebody like that. It is. There was a plastic surgeon years ago that had women who would come back in his office and say, "You didn't do anything with all the money I paid." and Yes, I did. Here's the picture before and here's the picture after. And then she would say, see, that's exactly what I mean. They're exactly alike. So they wow. are so severely bothered by what they are thinking about themselves that the truth right before their eyes doesn't work. The lady that I'm working with, we have to do small experiments. So her dad came to town. All right, well, let's go be with your dad. Well, when she was focused on him and not what he or other people were thinking about her, she could connect, she could be grounded, and she could let her personality come out, which is a big little step. Then to be able to do the same thing at work or in her church or any place else that, you know, people can and will accept me the way that I am. Mm -hmm. So it's the old how to eat an elephant, you know, one one bite at a time. So, okay, if I could be with dad and nobody threw things at me, okay, maybe I could try that experiment in other places. At least I had hoped she would. Um, wow. Yeah. So those different kinds of anxieties have some things in common, but each of the treatments for coaching or for counseling have to be individualized. Well, let's go back to the sport coat. When I go to Nordstrom and I want one of these, they have one that's in my size, looks pretty good. Then they bring the tailor out and they lengthen the sleeve a little bit and they tuck it in a little here or take down the neck a little bit or something like that. Then it fits perfectly. Well, that's what we have to do with everybody who's functioning pretty well with a little generalized anxiety, coach them to where they feel the strength they need in mm. order to deal with whatever threats that they're anxious about. And the perfect fit for a counseling patient is somewhat easier because there are hundreds of treatment plans for people with anxiety. And remember, anxiety is just kind of like an umbrella with lots of things under it and generalized anxiety, PTSD, OCD, even separation anxiety for children. If they hide behind mama's skirts, but then they got to go to kindergarten and then the kindergarten teacher has to decide who's having more separation anxiety, the child or the mama, you know, so uh, everybody can have that when they're afraid of losing that contact that they want. I had so, it. You just brought back a memory, you know, in kindergarten. Uh, uh -huh. and, and I do wonder in those situations when you're younger, do you carry those things with you? later in life let's say you had separation anxiety when you were a young child maybe um maybe your parents got divorced and maybe that that fueled a fear of maybe abandonment does oftentimes that stuff in your childhood carry to your later years unfortunately most people with treatment do better there was a study when they came out with some new machinery to check on our brains that they worked with trauma survivors, and it could be something like the separation at kindergarten or something worse. But people who had survived trauma, as many as six, or excuse me, as many 10 times a second, they would say, am I safe? 
Now, you and I can't even talk that fast. And we, say, we can't say that 10 times. Our brains think at 900 words a minute. We only speak at 125. But our brains up there are looking around and wondering, am I safe? And so they hear something that reminds them of leaving mom and being scared in kindergarten or that uh, time the twig broke when they were camping or the time they saw the gunman on the subway. Any time that you're in one of those states, the hyper arousal and hyper vigilance of anxiety could be a good thing because it could keep us warned safe. from, yeah, and keep us safe from bad things. Uh, uh, an anxiety attack, especially a panic attack, when panic happens, you have to go to the ER first because it feels like a heart attack. And so you go to the ER and they say, oh, congratulations, it's all in your head. Well, it feels kind of insulting. But knowing that it's a panic attack, okay, now I can do something about it. Medically, if there was something wrong, I needed to be in the ER. I needed to find that out. But the rest of the time when I have a panic attack or an anxiety attack, it needs to end with a lesson or a blessing. The lesson might be that I don't want to go downtown after dark alone, or it could be a blessing. You know, I'm stronger now than when I went to kindergarten. I can face and feel and finish those things. So uh, to say it depends is sort of weasel word language. But again, the diagnostic criteria, it's frequency, intensity, duration, and impact on the family and yourself. So if the panic attacks aren't happening very frequently, they aren't very intense, they don't last very long, and it's not having a disruptive effect at home or at work, oh, then maybe I could just get a little coaching to do better on the path toward being free of anxiety. And if it's catastrophic, might even need medication as well as counseling. Mm. Can we talk about that for, for just a moment, the medication? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. How do you determine, let's say you're working with somebody, how do you determine hey, you know what? I think it's time for medication for you. Well, let's do a worst case scenario. Someone who's agoraphobic and can't leave the bed or the bathroom at home, probably they will need some medication to be able to think more clearly. The limbic system in the, our brain has chemicals in it that if they're out of whack, we can't think straight, literally. Mm. And so... The moods that are there, uh, anxiety, depression, PTSD, if those chemicals are a little bit off, then we don't think straight, especially when the amygdala fires and there's the fight or flight cortisol that hits the frontal lobes. This is where we do our thinking, our executive functioning. So let's say you did see someone with a gun on the subway. Well, you would have that flood of chemicals into your brain. So then it's hard to say, um, what are some healthy responses to this? And what would be the positive and negative consequences of those? Which one do you think you ought to try first? And how will you know if it's successful? Well, that's good thinking. But if you're too fired up, you may need some medication to get you back at a healthy baseline so that when something happens, fight or flight, freeze or, or foggy brain, I know to take my cleansing breath and then I'm ready to think about this. If the gun's not pointed at me, maybe I need to call the police instead of be frozen in fear like deer in the headlights. Mm. It's a good question, but it would be based on the severity. Gotcha. And what is your personal feeling about taking medication? I'm a big fan. I use a prescription all the time. Oh, and wow. Thank you for sharing. So, <laughs> and so the ones that we have that are inside the head are just as important as the ones on the outside of the head. If they help us to function, um, I can't read without my glasses. I Mine are for close up, not for far away. Well, my life is better because of glasses. If someone told me their life would be better if they were on an antidepressant, anti-anxiety mid, um, especially for sleep. It's for some reason, that's when our guard's down and all those subconscious thoughts just invade our lives and dreams. For a good night's sleep, if all you need to do is take a pill, why not? If you had epilepsy and all you had to do to never have another seizure was take a pill, why not? 
Do I want people to get addicted to benzodiapapines and just get blanked out on something that's um, addictive? You build up a tolerance for it and it bothers you cognitively. No, I don't want that. But there's lots of better medication. And when you send somebody to their doctor, okay, you're asking them to be a guinea pig and try these different medications to see what works. Because right now, the science isn't so far along that we know that if you're O positive, you need Prozac. We don't have that kind of data. Well, there is. Uh, and I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this, and I really appreciate it. Uh, sure. th there is DNA tests. One of them is GeneSight, where you it's just a swab on your cheek, and they can tell you what meds you should be. And this is mostly for antidepressants, which ones... Oh agree with your system, which ones don't. In my experience, the people I know that have done it have found it to be quite accurate. There are some doctors I've even spoken to that say, yeah, you know, whatever. Then there's other ones that say, yeah, it's reasonable. Can't hurt. Take a look at it. Yeah. You know, um, you said something before that was, I believe, majorly impactful. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine with medication if you need it. Um, I'm yes. also from the school of, you know, let's try other things before we get to that point. But if you need it, no problem. But you said, you know, the chemicals are in your brain. If it's not working right, these are other chemicals here. And I never thought of it that way. Well, one of the things they're finding now is we don't just make these brain chemicals, um, serotonin, endorphin, norepinephrine, we don't just make them up here. They are also made in the gut and other places in the body, and they take the elevator up there. Uh -huh. So even if you have a TBI or something else that's affected your manufacturing plant, our complex bodies can do more to help us to be able to deal with emotional triggers. So I don't get a kickback from pharmaceuticals. I'm not ever going to say everybody needs to take every medication. Sure. But if you could swab and say, okay, this one seems to be the right one to start with. If it has a side effect, then, okay, maybe we'll try a second one. But at least to give somebody a jumping off point. Yeah. Why not? That um, DNA test, I'm very close with someone who tried many antidepressants. And they, it just doesn't work for her. It even makes uh -huh. her even more anxious. And just so she went on a mood stabilizer, gets a job done quite well. She Good. did do the DNA test. And wouldn't you know it, the antidepressants are all in the red column, meaning stay away. And quite a few uh -huh. of them are in the yellow column. Um, and then there's other people I've seen the same thing where some antidepressants that they felt didn't work for them were in the yellow column where it's kind of questionable. Well, if that was me, I'd stay away from that. There's other ones that you yeah. can take that are in the uh, in the green column. Uh, and then again, you know, I look at if you have sleeping issues, maybe try CBD first. Maybe that's another option for you. You know, before you you go into a, a prescribed medication, uh, if you need it, you need it. <laughs> Whatever works. Well, and if it works but produces a side effect, it can't stand. For example, I have had two patients, men who took um, SSRI antidepressant that was supposed to work on anxiety and depression. And for both of them, the sexual side effects were so catastrophic that appreciated getting their level of depression and anxiety better, but couldn't stand not being able, erectile dysfunction disorder. And so they went to Wellbutrin, which is the only one that's advertised that I know of that doesn't have the sexual side effect. So that was more of a match. And again, why not try this one? Oh, well, it has this side effect that I can't sleep, or this one has mm -hmm. the side yeah. effect that I am all torn up with my GI. All right. Well, then try, try again. When yeah. we were learning to walk, we failed all the time. We leaned left, we leaned right, we leaned yep. forward, we leaned back. We failed and failed and failed until we got it. Well, we're still those kids that are trying to work out how to work it out. So I want people to use a cane if they can't walk. I want people to use glasses if they can't read. And I want people to use anxiety meds if they can't get out of bed and get out of their bedroom. There's just no reason for that suffering. 
and you bring a great point before about the gut in my uh, personal research mm -hmm. the, there's a brain down there it's not the big brain but it's the little brain that that communicates with the big brain and there's massive mm -hmm. communication going back and forth um so when there's issues here it affects down here and then vice versa uh i think sometimes we need to be mindful of that too i do too i think it's interesting how throughout history people have talked about their emotions being in their heart or the old hebrews thought emotions were in the gut and we've all had gut wrenching emotions well, now science is kind of confirming that not everything is in this brain. There's other parts of the body that are pretty responsive yeah. to those emotional triggers. And so, well, let's um, switch over. How much time do we have left? We have uh, five minutes. All right. Then I am going to introduce the idea of emotional freedom techniques. It is using acupuncture points to change how you think and feel by just a simple tapping on the karate chop part of your hand and talking to yourself as you do it, the electric current is going from your hand to your brain and giving you neuroplasticity so that you are able to think differently and make new pathways. So electronically, that's good. If at the same time, I said, I have peace of mind. 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 Well, when you do that and you hear it in your own voice, then you are changing yourself. It would be if you were in a cult, give the cult leader all your money, give the cult leader all your money. Well, okay, I guess we can give them all the money. Well, if I am reprogramming my brain, it's not like I've been in a cult, but I've been trapped with anxiety. And just to think that there's something I can do to change my brain as well as change my mind. Well, you might say that's an artificial distinction. But when you hear your own voice, I can run this marathon. I can jump off this high dive. I can take this geometry test. When you talk to yourself in ways that are rational, you're going to do better. And if you think irrationally, uh, I can't stand this. I can't do this. I'm unworthy. I will get caught as an imposter. Then you're not going to perform as well as if you got rid of all that stinking thinking and you reminded yourself, I've got this. I'm thinking that we're going to have to, I, we were going to do um, examples of this and, and we probably, we're going to have to circle back to this because I think it's so impactful, but questions when yes. we, when we do this, the interrupt mm -hmm. at a meridian, acupuncture point yeah are are we and saying the proper phrase to convince ourselves are we essentially going like this to our brain hello you gotta listen yes. or is it a circuit interrupt are we interrupting <laughs> a circuit both because when i do it i like to do the top of the head between the eyebrows beside the eyes under the eyes under the nose under the lips where your shoulder blades come together and form that corner, and then under your arm, about where a bra strap would be. Well, all of those acupuncture points during three or 4,000 years of history have proven to be attached to things. Maybe you've even seen those reflexology maps where if you touch yeah. this part of your foot, it's your liver, and this one's your kidney and stuff like that. Well, modern medicine might not want to go along with all those things, but I'm open-minded enough to think, you know, for 4,000 years, if in China they put a needle to take away anxiety or you drink some tea bark to lose your panic attack, shouldn't we at least listen or give it a try? I'm a needle phobe, but I would have acupuncture if I couldn't go to sleep at night. I used to probably still am a needle phobe, but and if, <laughs> if you ask me like even five years ago, I'd be like, eh, I don't know, I'm going to do that now. Uh, it's been on my radar for all different things. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get into a place. I just haven't had time to make an appointment and, and go down that road. But you get to a point where it's like, no problem. Let's do it. You know, because uh -huh. you know, half the time they say you don't even feel it. It's yeah, all of that. It's just, it's up here. You know what we need to do? I am not a needle phobe. 
I am not a meat phobe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I can handle a little bit of this discomfort for a long-term benefit. Yeah, yeah. And and to your point, Ray, centuries, centuries, been around, centuries, and it's still here. Same thing with energy healing. You know, yes. some believe it's bunk, but others like myself believe it's the real deal and it can help you heal. But we have people that don't feel that way. And that's fine. They're entitled to their opinion. Well, they are. And, you know, if they've got a melanoma, they don't want to just drink tree bark tea. They want to have surgery and chemo and radiation and, and go hog wild to get everything they can to endure the suffering in the meantime in order to extend their life and vitality. But for a lot of things that are in the anxiety umbrella, then tapping has remarkable results. And for the last 15 or 20 years, the VA has used that as their first treatment. And I sent you a little clip that could be available to your listeners. And with the caveat that there's one F-bomb in there, so uh, they're talking to three different soldiers, and one's my age and has been troubled with PTSD since the Vietnam War. So... If you are reluctant to try something hocus pocus or voodoo, well, it's Halloween. You ought to try something hocus pocus, right? <laughs> um, then I think that that little short video would make you more open to being open. Uh, I can reach over here and pull a stick of selenite. Do you believe huh. in crystals? I have. No. I, I was a rock collector. I love those things. I uh, Same. And I wear this and there's, uh -huh. you know, I think a lot of it's all in the intent, you know, yeah, I could take a pen and say, this is a healing pen right here. I have a pen. It's going to make you feel better. Take away my, your anxiety. If you put the intent in it, it, it may actually do just that, but yes. why not? Why, why do we shun these things? Many of us away that it's like, woo, woo, woo. try it. You have nothing yeah. to lose. It's not going to hurt you. It's all maybe give you a different kind of perspective. Well, especially if you hear yourself saying it, I'm at peace. I enjoy trying new things. I like to be competent and confident. Well, yeah, maybe saying those things a few times before that geometry test or whatever would help you perform better. I will share with you all through going to church and even up until three years ago. I would always hear, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. And you're like, eh, whatever, okay. Until I realized I didn't have peace. Mm -hmm. And then it hit me. That's what that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, need, you need peace in your life, no matter what it is, whatever you, um, however you define it, however you get it. But that was my aha moment. You said the word yes. peace, and that was a that was a trigger, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but a, a good lot. one to remind you that there is an opportunity to have peace, even if it has been a long time. Like someone struggling since the Vietnam War, sure, they can still change their mind. Yeah, it's possible. And it why not try some of the modalities that we're talking about? Whether it's CBD, if it's medication, if it's EFT, uh, definitely want to. Go deeper into EFT if we could next time we get together. Right. We'll do that. Yeah. It's good to get to see you. You too. Ray, how do we find you? Best way for coaching is drraysmith.com. And the best way for counseling is healthycounselingcenter.com. And some of our recordings are now on those websites. And the telephone numbers are there. That's easy. Email ZZ, Dr. Ray at DrRaySmith.com. So I would be willing to try to help anybody. Who's like, okay, you think you're so smart. What would you do with this kind of anxiety? Well, I don't know, but let's talk about it. Exactly. Or check the book out, Anxiety yeah. Quest, right? Right. Well, the Anxiety Quest refers to the journey from where you are to where you want to go. It's like if I'm stuck with anxiety here, but I want to be in anxiety sobriety, then I need a guide to take me on that pathway to where I get where I want to go and close the gap from where I am to where I want to be. Always fantastic talking with you. So much insight. <laughs> really, really enjoy it. Well, me too, Steve. I appreciate this. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.